What's up, YouTube? Um, I want to talk about the future of energy, uh, the different components, why we have to go a certain way to protect our planet. Because frankly, we've been doing a pretty shitty job. Um, as you all know, uh, natural gas is extremely cheap now. Uh, do you know why that is? I'll tell you the number one reason. Well, I'll tell you, for one, OPEC, and in the past when gas was uh, over uh, $100 a barrel, I think it's pretty obvious now that was bullshit. And uh, today, we're really effing up the uh, earth with fracking. I don't know if you guys are familiar. Some of you might not be familiar, but fracking's where uh, these oil companies drill a couple hundred, you know, meters down into earth, and then turn and pump. Uh, what is it? Uh, eight. I want to say eight. 800,000 liters of water, which is equivalent to like 65 water intake, daily water intake for 65,000 65, people. And they're using a combination of different chemicals. Uh, there's like 700 different toxic poisonous chemicals uh, that they're pumping in there to uh, get the oil extract and uh, Basically, they're destroying in the Earth crust future drinking water. So, you know, natural gas fracking became real popular when oil was really high, but now it's dropped a lot. And I hope, because as a human race, we're obviously pretty freaking naive, stupid, or both. Uh, that that fracking will stop because there's like a a million over a million instances that the U.S. alone has done it. And they're contaminating our water, and uh, for future generations, and that's not water you can treat. I know that's the first thing that comes here. Well, well, we'll just treat our water, but you can't now with frack when fracking's occurred. So. We need to get off relying on natural gas. I know it's cheap in the United States, but it's cheap because of our reserves. And we've depleted, you know, our conventional ways of getting oil. So now we've turned to fracking for like 60% of it, and it needs to stop. And it has emissions, uh, you know, which means it's bad for the ozone layer. And it's, it's I'm not, you know, some conspiracy theorist or anything but it, 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 we're, we're messing up the earth by doing that now we're oh and then okay let's move it on coal coal is cheap coal is plentiful but we need to get away from coal coal is responsible for more death in the world than any other type of energy the, the facts don't lie and I always look at facts who they're presented from and I take into consideration the bell curve because you can pat you can paint facts and charts as you see fit so you got to be wary of that but scientific facts don't lie and coal is bad and needs to go away and we got to stop tearing up the earth to get it we burn it and it's gone it's simple it's convenient we need to get the hell away from it. Now, we're making strides. Now, I know they say that we have, you know, to 2050 to show that we've gotten our uh, emissions down where we'll kind of reverse what we're d doing to, to the atmosphere and the ozone layer. The, the strides we're making, all right, so, just to, 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 to refresh, get away from natural gas. Stop fracking. Fracking is horrible. Stop using coal. Replace coal. We have to replace coal. And I live in Kentucky, and that's all. That's that's the market here. Coal, coal, coal. You go, you know, into these small towns, 
and convenience stores and whatnot, and they got big signs up, you know, like your energy think a coal miner. What the fuck? I'm sorry, but but I have to keep it real. Coal coal is no good, and we got we got to get away from it. Now the strides we're making. We're going into solar, which is good. We're going into wind energy, which is good. We're going into water turbine, ocean turbines. That's good. These are all good things. Granted, there is some debate about, you know, these things, not so much for the turbines, obviously, but the other things are, you know, what impact does it have on nature, the animal kingdom. Those are warranted, but come on. Those are excuses too. If a few birds die in wind turbines, they will adapt and realize, you know what I mean? Adaptation. But the, but the, the truth of the matter is, there are reliable energy, but they're an unpredictable energy. And my other concern is, they do take up a lot of real estate. Now you'll see people that are pro renewables, and 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 the fact is, you shouldn't be just pro. It, it's a given. That's where our future is going, and we need it. We have to do it. But they'll they'll put up a chart like the United States, and they'll say, okay, the whole allocation of if we allocated all the solar, it would take up the state of Maine, right? And that doesn't seem like much. But, but, but in the real world, it doesn't work like that. So you have to contribute a lot of real estate to these solar farms, um, turbine. I know I drove up to Purdue University about a month ago, and I was like, holy shit. It was like I went in the twilight zone. Before I got to Lafayette, I saw so many wind farms. Oh my gosh, everywhere. And they're huge. They're like the size of, you know... A major major skyscraper they are very tall very big and they're everywhere in, in certain locations so I don't know I guess if I was like you know in government and I would sign off on that but the land underneath it should be like uh, cultivated somehow that you can uh, you know for corn or uh, some other type of produce or something you know that type of land usage to me that's smart you're you're, you're 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 doubling up on your on your resources so I'm happy we're going with that but where I see the world going in order to get away from natural gas and and coal and without influence meaning from lobbyists that put money in your pocket as a politician and, and you just make the right decisions for your people. You're getting away from soul, I mean, you're getting away from coal, you're getting away from gas, and you are investing in nuclear energy as your base load. Meaning, okay, I know by 2020, Japan has come out, you know, on their international statistics, their think tanks, and said, look, the world should be at about 20% nuclear, and you know, then the natural gas and coal will make a part of that pie, and about 40 percent will be uh, the renewables. But where we need to go around 2030, 2033, is about 30 percent nuclear, and then the other seven percent your 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 renewables, your various renewables. Nuclear is very important because. Uh, it's a clean energy, no emissions. The only thing coming out of those chimneys at the nuclear reactors is water vapor. The only downfall is it uses a lot of water, but you can treat that water. See, there's a difference between nuclear and fracking. And in all honesty, the, the, the fracking operations by big oil is using just as much or probably even more based on your cross studies of water and that's water we can't recruit in the long term it, it, it's not going to happen but a nuclear we can treat that water and another thing if you listen to some of the Bill Gates uh, 
seminars because he's really behind it. Warren Buffett's on, on board. A lot of people realize the importance of nuclear energy. Nuclear waste has always been the rallying card for the, the protesters of nuclear energy. Well, now with technology advances, reactors are being built that can process nuclear waste. What makes up nuclear waste? Well, let's say, okay, you get uranium out of the ground. Turn it and process it in the yellow cake. It goes to the nuclear reactor. The nuclear reactor gets about 5% out of that and then, you know, and it's cheap and, it, you know, it's the cheapest energy in the world too. I just want to throw them in there. But then like 95% of that yellow cake is considered, you know, nuclear waste, right? Well, scientists have shown where now we can take that nuclear waste and we can process it down. Just, I mean, it's not a theory, it's what the future is. It's just like when we process down uh, nuclear weapon, uh, weapons, you know, when we, when we break that down and, you know, to a lower level that it can be, like a 4% can be consumed by nuclear reactors. That's already here too. That's been happening. That's what uh, we've asked Iran to do. That's what Ru the, the treaty between Russia and the United States have already done. That was completed, what, 2000? I think the treaty went through 2013. I might be off a year, but so in, in, in conclusion, I can see a strong push to a pie that consists of ideally 30 to 35 percent of nuclear energy and then you split the rest of the pie solar let's say 30 percent nuclear energy solar 30 percent and then or, or 25 percent wind 25 percent and then uh the water turbines 20 percent right and there you go we cut emissions we have cheap energy now solar and, and and wind is not cheap right now and that's just because uh it's the new and the newest and latest and greatest so these installers and everybody, they are ripping off the public. They are overcharging. Those things, well, I can't speak on the construction of wind because it's it's a very, very high upfront cost. But let's just say you're putting solar on your house. Now's not the time to buy. I know there's kickbacks and incentive for taxes, but it's all it's it, it's it's a front and, and a, a vehicle for these installers to rip you off. It should not, now the prices are dropping and they will continue to drop. That's why I'm holding off for about two more years before I put solar on my house. You don't see any solar on any houses in Kentucky. Now I know it's on almost every house in Arizona and a and, and lot in California, a lot in Georgia, a lot in uh, New Mexico. But. I'm gonna wait till those prices come down because I'm not gonna allow the installers to gorge me, you know, 10,000, 14,000 to put in a solar panel on a 2,000 square foot house. So the, the idea of what you're looking at on the roof, facing the west, hey, it's, uh, you know, I, I, of that 10,000, 14,000, what, what, what are the solar panels costing? I, I would venture to say they're costing less than $1,500 for the actual panels. But these motherfuckers that are uh, installing it are gorging you for like 800 to 1,000%. And that's ridiculous. And I'm not going to take part in that until that self-corrects. They're just taking advantage of people's trying to, you know, get these t tax write-offs for going green. So, I kind of went on a tangent, but I just wanted to talk about why I think we're going to uh, solar, wind, turbines, 
and nuclear and it's something for you to keep in mind and better understand because in the past we've had cycles where the most important thing in the market was technology and it will always be near the top too and bio, bio uh, medicine well the future from 2000 16 to 2050 that economies rely on and are built upon is energy. I believe our uh, our po our world population is expected to grow two and a half fold by 2050. Our energy consumption continuously doubles. Uh, I believe in 1994 it's doubled uh, from the 50s and then 94 to 2006 it's doubled again and from 2006 uh, to 2030 it's expected to double again and then 2000 I'm not sure on the tail back into that 2030 to 2050 it's gonna double but our consumption is off the chain and we, I don't know if uh, the United States, because I, I, I'm, I'm obviously I'm from Kentucky, I'm a U.S. citizen. I don't know if in the future, like when I say the future, like eight to ten years from now, if the government should seriously thinking about putting a quota on how many children we can have per family unit, kind of like the Chinese, because and other countries, you know, unilaterally need to do the same thing because our population is getting out of control, our energy consumption is getting out of control, and we really gotta do, we're already about 10 to 15 years behind on self-correcting, and we're running out of time. So, it, obviously, if you look at the news in Google, um, the solar and wind has gotten a lot of press because those renewables have helped get a lot of people in office, and now it looks like it's going to be nuclear energy who's been crapped on and there's been a lot of uh, misleading and a lot of hate for not understanding and ironically it's mostly a female population because if historically females don't like to take risk they don't like fear they don't I heard the theory that Men look at an objective from the top to bottom. Women look at from the bottom to the top. Less risk adverse, uh, less brainstorming. You know what I mean? They just like to stay where they're at. As long as their uh, hair iron turns on, they, you know, simplicity. It's just natural instinct. But I think because women make up a lot of our green movement uh, protesters and lobbyists that they're starting to realize just how important nuclear is and the only downfall to it is it does use a lot of water but you can re you can uh, reprocess that water and they realize that it's it's so green and it, it has no equal and we're going to get away from coal and natural gas. That's all I got. I'd love to hear your ideas. I kind of went off all over the place, but i just been doing a lot of research on fracking and stuff, and it's disgusting. And, well, with oil being so low, see, my, my opinion is, you know, I've heard different. There's so many theories, you know. There's a theory for every finger on your hand, both hands. You know, we're trying to hurt Russia because they rely on oil. We're trying to hurt Saudis because they're relying on oil and they're depleting their gold reserves. Well, the theory that I run with is it's low because world leaders are trying to stop fracking in their country. Because fracking, even though the United States is one of the key culprits, it's huge in Europe and it's huge in many places. And it's messing up our earth and we need to stop before so our generations kids next generations kids have an earth to walk on 
and not be, you know, dead like the Bible calls for where we burn, you know. So, thanks for watching. Leave your comments. I believe I'm on point with everything I said. And embrace nuclear and embrace your renewables and be anti-coal and natural gas because it's so bad. And the cons well way outweigh uh, the benefits, uh, which is really the only benefit is the profit of the people who are doing the fracking and, and the coal mines and stuff. There is really no benefit ultimately when you look at it from, uh, you know, what we're doing for our environment, what we're doing for our future generations of people, the contamination, the poison, and everything that comes into play. Thank you for watching. Have a good one. See ya.